All right, y'all, welcome to session 16 of the course. And in this session, we will be talking about <clears throat> the bear market. And yes, the thumbnail is quite scary. Um, it's a, a picture of a grizzly bear when grizzlies attack. When grizzlies attack. Um, thank you guys for being here. We've got the outline going. And this is a topic that a lot of people like to bring up because they say, hey, you know, it's great trading Bitcoin in a bull market. It's so easy, right? Anyone can make money in a bull market, right? Well, we all know that's not even true. We all know that a lot of people have lost a lot of money trading this bear market. I'm sorry, trading this bull market. And for some reason, people have this misconception that if we're in a bear market, then everybody's going to be losing money. But the reality is, if we're actually in a bear market where we're in a downtrend, and things are trending down for a long period of time over months and months and months it's absolutely no different than a bull market where things are trending up for months and months and months the only difference is instead of prioritizing those longs we're going to prioritize those shorts and um, in a bear market you're not going to get stuck with your shorts uh, down by your ankles in fact if anything you might end up with your shorts pulled up too high and you might get a wedgie but that's the only danger there is, shorting in a bear market. So today we're going to talk about trading in a bear market. We're going to talk about how to identify the fact that we're in a bear market. We're going to talk about the mindset change you need to have in a bear market. And more importantly than the bear market, I think is the... Um, oh, look, this is where I stole the thumbnail from. More importantly than the bear market is the, the mindset that we have to have in a, a low volatility market, a market where things are trading mostly sideways um, that's the real issue that we need to deal with here it's not the bear market it's what do we do when things are not moving at all like after the bear market in 2018 I mean things traded sideways right Bitcoin was between three and seven thousand for, for months and maybe we got up to ten thousand and we came back down to four thousand there weren't these huge moves that we could capitalize on and so that's that's really what what I want to focus on in this session is how are we going to how are we going to trade those sideways markets where there's not this these massive amounts of volatility but in an area that's more like this right here where we're just kind of trading sideways you know for almost for almost an entire month right in this area how are we going to trade that and this was technically still in a in a bull market but you know we come back to 2019 and um you know, even after the corona dump, and we just get these long periods of time where we're just literally trading sideways. How are we going to deal with that? There's a lot of ways to deal with that, um, but we're going to focus specifically on trading Bitcoin and Ethereum, and, um, you know, we could branch out into some other assets too. And more importantly, we're going to be talking about, you know, what do we do now? What do we do while we're in the bull market? What do we do in the meantime? <clears throat> because we need to be preparing now for the bear market the bull market is not going to last forever it's not going to last forever and right now is the time that we need to prepare we need to get our what do they say get our our affairs in order get our chickens in an order i don't know what they say people say some things and that's what we need to do so trading in a bear market let me just make sure everything's cool Guys, can uh, can you guys hear? Is everything cool in the Discord, in the YouTube channel? Is there any lag or anything like that? Uh, I don't think there is otherwise. Ducks in a row. Ducks in a row. That's what we need. We need to get our ducks in a row. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Cool. Everything sounds great. All right, so the first thing we need to do is how do we identify a bear market? It can be hard to identify the beginning of a bear market because only in hindsight can we see the exact top. Uh, however, there are some things we can do to prepare. Every time we get one of these dumps, right, every single time we get one of these dumps, it could be the end of the bull market, right? Every time we get one of these dumps, it could be. We wouldn't know. We wouldn't know. We would get a little recovery, then we'd get a, a lower low, and then we'd just keep on going down like that. 
it would be hard to tell at first. And a lot of times, well, I remember back in 2017 where people were really in denial about the bear market. Um, and I'll be honest with you guys, I was blessed to not be in denial. Um, I was convinced that when Bitcoin hit, hit $10,000, that was too high. It couldn't go any higher than that, because I had been I had been holding Bitcoin for quite some time since it was in the low hundreds, and so to me that was like, man, this is this is insane. It can't go any higher. I sold like half of my Bitcoin at that when it hit ten thousand, and then was kicking myself for not holding it all until it got to you know eighteen, nineteen thousand. But I remember people being in denial, saying that we were going to recover after we crashed from 20,000. And if we go back and just take a look at that, where did this actually happen? Um, oh, uh, this is Bybit. I have to go to Binance because Bybit didn't even come around until after that crash. So VTC, USDT, and Binance. And we shall go back in time. Travel back in time in our time machine. to right around here right around here and we had gotten dumps right we had gotten dumps we got on the way up you know bitcoin it went from you know 5000 all the way up to 7600 then it crashed all the way down to 5000 again and that was that was a big dump that was a um you know from the top to the bottom that was a 32% correction and then again we had a dump right here when we were at like 17 point two thousand dollars we we dumped all the way down to twelve thousand and so these dumps were kind of normal right these dumps were kind of normal and so when we came up here from 19k we got this massive correction 45 percent correction but then we immediately bounced back and everyone was like yeah we're it was just a just a correction don't worry we're gonna keep on going up and it the way it happened well, look we, we crashed we formed a lower high then we formed a higher low, then we formed a higher high. So people were like, okay, we're forming higher highs and higher lows. It's not until hindsight that we can see, you know, okay, it's not until we get the 21 crossing over the 55 EMA somewhere over here at the end of January that it's like, okay, this is, this is for real now. Um, and then it was just constantly down from there. So what we need to do is, you know, as we are looking at the markets continuing to go up and then we're you know going through these corrections maintaining our our bullish sentiment saying okay buy the dips so that we can go up what we really need to be doing along the way is especially if we're trading if we're trading and we're making profit and we're doing the inverse perpetual contracts to stack our bitcoin what i do is i take the profits that i make from trading and i take a certain percentage of that and i put it into stable coin now this is separate from my overall crypto portfolio which i'm holding and i don't even trade with this is the, these are the profits i make from trading if i make a certain amount of bitcoin i will take 30 35 even sometimes 40 percent depending on how i'm feeling <laughs> of the profit that i made in a given month and i will just move it into tether move it into usdc and what this does is even though it can hurt when you take a whole bunch of Bitcoin and put it into Tether at, let's say, 45K, and then you see Bitcoin going up to 60K, and you're like, dang, I should have just hold, I should have just held and sold at a higher price. The thing is, we don't know when the high is going to be, so it's just, it's scaling out. Any good investor will tell you, if you buy here, take some profit out 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 here because we don't know where that top is going to be and so it only makes sense it's only wise and logical that every time we get to a new high take some profit out on a regular basis that way when we do start to dump down you're hedging yourself against losing everything um, even if you're not actively trading and you're just holding Bitcoin you know if that's what you want to do of course I'm a, tr I'm a trader so I don't want to just do that but it's a good idea if you bought Bitcoin at you know twenty thousand dollars take out some profit that way you're you're hedging yourself against those losses because a lot of people lost a lot of money during this during this crash now when we're looking at these markets it's important to try and stay neutral 
okay? It's hard to do, but a neutral bias will keep you open to the idea that the market may turn around. Trade level to level and use market cipher for confluence. So, trade level to level. You know, I, I always talk about this, but really, as far as Bitcoin goes right now, I'm looking at these levels right here that I have marked out in my chart. I have, I have more lines here than, than I should because I was marking other things. But really, unless the price comes out of this range, no, no other price matters to me right now other than between you know 58 and 60K. Because for the past two days, the price has stayed within this range and so I'm not going to start to think about higher or lower prices until we break that range. I'm just going to be trading Bitcoin level to level, daily level to daily level. And if we lose this daily level, then I'll be looking down to this daily level. And if we lose that, I'll be looking down to here and then down to here and then so on and so forth. I don't have them all marked out on this chart. But that's kind of how we maintain a neutral bias, right? We're not necessarily always expecting a huge breakout to happen or a huge breakdown to happen. We're just going to take it as it comes. And we're going to keep in our minds that the price may go up, the price may go down, and as traders, that shouldn't really, it shouldn't really affect us that much because we are able to make money regardless of what the markets are doing. So if we get into the mentality that the price has to always keep going up, then the, the bull market is going to come upon us like a thief in the night. We won't be ready for it. Sorry, not the bull market, the bear market. We're not going to be prepared for it. But if we're focused on the task at hand, which is trading level to level and understanding that the price may go up, it may go down, it may trade sideways, then we can maintain somewhat of a neutral bias, even though obviously we're all bullish right now. It won't catch us so off guard because really a lot of people in 2017 were convinced that the Bitcoin price would have to keep going up because all the hype around crypto and how Bitcoin is going to revolutionize uh, the world of economics and all this, there were a lot of Bitcoin believers who, you know, were in denial. But uh, we just need to keep a neutral bias. Uh, we need to identify downtrends, right? Once we enter a downtrend, if we change our focus to shorting, then we're, we'll also be kind of safer. So if we're looking at, let me go back to this chart here. If we're looking at the four-hour time frame, for instance, okay, and um, if we're looking at the four-hour time frame, if we see that the moving averages, the 21 and the 55, cross below, where the 21 crosses below the 55, then we are prioritizing shorting, right? We're prioritizing shorting while these moving averages are crossed over like this. And if they cross bullish, where the 21 is over the 55, then we pr prioritize longs and if the moving averages are you know kind of on top of each other and price is trading along moving averages then we're focused on trading a range and if we if we just keep an eye on how the market is moving trend wise then it won't really be that crazy if things just keep going down because you know right here we were fo prioritizing the longs because the 21 moving average was above the 55 moving average identifying that we're in it in an uptrend so we can buy the dip buy the dip and then when the moving averages are kind of on top of each other and price is not above or below the moving averages but trading on the moving averages that's when we switch to a a range mindset where we're looking to buy the lows and sell the highs and then once the moving averages cross bearish where the 55 is above the 21 and price is below both the moving averages then our, our focus changes to shorting. We're looking to, to sell the highs, um, to short the highs, and, um, and then get out of our position you know, at these lows here. And so if we kind of focus on this, it's so easy to get wrapped up looking at like, you know, what's the five minute time frame doing? Like, I, you know, I do it all the time. I'm looking at these tiny little time frames. I'm trying to find these these moves, right? These moves and, and scalp, you know, this and short that and long this and short that. I'm trying to do those things. And it, it can be easy to lose the bigger picture, which is, you know, the four hour time frame, the daily time frame. Uh, if, if we see that we're getting the downtrend on the four-hour time frame, like in this area right here, 
Well, then we need to keep our, a close eye on how long is this going on for, right? And we need to also watch the daily time frame, the 12 hour and the daily time frame. This entire bull market, even in those big dumps that we had so far, we've never had the 21 cross below the 55 on the 12 hour. Uh, if you start to see that the 55 is, is above the 21 for so long on the 4 hour that it starts to happen on the 12 hour and then the daily, that's just more and more confirmation that we're, we're moving out of this bull market and we need to start prioritizing you know, a different kind of mindset. And then really, we just do the opposite of what we would do in a bull market. Instead of looking for those huge breakout pumps, we're going to look for huge dumps. So let's go back and take a look at 2017, 2018. Uh, in our time machine again, we're going to go back. Technology is amazing how we can just travel through time. Okay, here we are. Here we are. And uh, let, me, let me go to the four-hour time frame here. Oh, man. We have to use our time machine again, guys. I'm sorry. That's the problem with time machines, though. They're so fickle, right? You can travel all the way back in time and then just get shot back to the present in an instant. It's it's disappointing. All right, here we are. <clears throat> here we are. Okay. So... We're in this uptrend. Everything's going great. You know, buy the dip. Yeah, just buy the dip. Bitcoin's crashing. Just buy the dip, you know. And then all of a sudden, people are buying the dip. And uh, and what happens? Well, we start confirming candles below the 55 EMA. And then we get the EMA flip. Okay? Now, this is our signal that we are going to start prioritizing the shorts. And we're just literally going to do the opposite of what we would do in a, in a bull market, right? When we get the red trigger waves uh, on the four hour we're going to be looking to enter a short position and you know you could short right here and even just the money flow crossover right short right here money flow crosses over you come down that's a 28 percent move right there that's a huge move we come back up bounce reject off the 21 ema you know like during the bull market i'm all about buying the dip when we come and bounce off the 21 ema well in a bear market when we come up and reject off the 21 EMA, you know, that's another 20% right there. And, uh, you know, we come all the way up here, giving people a ray of hope, right? But we, we take note that even though we have this ray of hope and you could have entered a nice long position here based on the double bottom and the trigger wave, we're noticing the EMAs that they're not flipping bullish yet. So, you know, when we cross back under, enter another short, that's a nice, you know, 10%. And then we reject off the EMAs again. And we're printing, as we're rejecting off the EMAs, we're printing a red wave on the four hour. Short that down. That's 18%. Now, if you're doing this for the inverse perpetual contract to stack your Bitcoin, you're making a ton of Bitcoin right now. And if you're doing the regular uh, perpetual contracts, you're making a ton of tether right now. And we're going to get into that later. Should you, should you do for Bitcoin? Should you do for tether? But really, I, I recommend you, you do a little bit of both. I recommend you do a little bit of both, or at least trade for the tether and then buy Bitcoin at a low price. And then again, you know, we see this this red trigger wave right here. We can see a clear direction. Um, you know, momentum is coming down. We short up here. That's a massive move. I mean, th we're there's going to be so much opportunity to make money on the way down. Uh, that's another 20% gain, or you could chop it into two, make 18% here. Then when we when we reject off the 21 EMA, come down, make 20%. And you know, don't get me wrong, we're gonna have we're gonna be zigging and zagging all up in here, right? I mean, we didn't come straight down, but look look at how this looks. This does look very similar to, you know, what happened to us back in January when we when we came up to. Uh, what was it? Was it forty thousand or something like that? Thirty or forty thousand, and then we we came back down to twenty eight thousand. It looks very similar to that. So we, we need to. This is why we need to just trade what the market is telling us. And you know, if showing us that we're in a downtrend, then we're looking for those shorts. And if the moving averages flip bullish again, then then we're looking for the longs. And we're just doing what the market's telling us. But this whole way down. 
we could have shorted the whole way down uh, looking at the four hour time frame when we get those money flow crossovers from the green to the red boom that's a 35 percent correction right here money flow crosses over on the four hour time frame that's a 12 percent uh, right here money flow crosses over we're rejecting off the emas at the money flow crossover and man that's a that's a 45 percent short over the course of a week and then we start kind of uh, you know, ranging. We start ranging from here. Um, and Bitcoin goes into the deep, dark crypto winter. The crypto winter where we where we we thought we couldn't come lower than 6k, but then we, we keep coming lower. We keep coming lower. Whew, man. Man. By the time 2019 comes around, everyone's thrown, thrown away their I told you show told you so Bitcoin shirts. Uh, you know, everybody has to, uh, their, their Lamborghinis are getting repoed, and now they've got those little Razor scooter skateboard things. People's houses are getting taken away. People lo lost everything, right? Yeah, and, and, and here we are in the midst of crypto winter, where we have to zoom in to see these tiny moves. And this is the four-hour time frame. So you can see, you know, this this is this is crypto winter where the the moves are very scarce, and what we're, what we see is like you know there's not much price action for for days on end, right? From the 21st of January all the way to the 26th of January, we're trading in this tiny little range that's only you know a two percent, three percent at the most range where we're looking to basically scalp these little ranges. Um, scalp the little ranges but there is hope there is hope in these areas there is hope okay we're going to talk about that we're going to talk about that um so really in the in the actual bear market before we get into crypto winter where everyone loses interest in bitcoin and crypto we will make a lot of money shorting this thing down okay but we need to be we need to constantly be prepared by taking profit while we're in profit we also need to constantly be prepared by not having a constantly bullish bias and always looking for the next pump, but looking at our moving averages, identifying the trend, and prioritizing the type of trading that fits the trend. The trend is your friend in, until the end. So the bull trend is our friend until the end of the bull trend, and the bear trend is our friend until the end of the bear trend. Okay, so let's talk about trading in a low volatility market, crypto winter. Okay. Trading in sideways markets does require a change of mindset because instead of looking for those huge moves like we're looking for now, right? Everyone's waiting for the breakout. Are we going to break out? Or are we going to break down and go back to 55.8 or 54? Are we going to break up and go to 70K? People are waiting for these huge moves, these smooth moves, these smooth, huge moves. And so that's, that's our mindset right now. But in the midst of crypto winter, we need to shift into range trading. And honestly, guys, range trading is very comfortable. Support, resistance, Fibonacci levels, even patterns become very strong areas to enter a trade. So right now, we're currently in a range. And if I, if I come to the chart right here and uh, if I make it a tad bit larger, let me go to this chart here. And I'm just going to erase all these levels. Um, well, no, I won't, I won't erase these levels. I won't erase the levels. But I will put a level here because there, there is a level here as well. So um, right now, we've been trading within this range for quite some time. And, and really, if we go to the four hour, we can see that we've been trading in this kind of a range from the middle of March between 60 and 50K. And so what this does is it allows us to, instead of always looking for the breakout, it just allows us to look to see when does price get to one of these levels. And when price does get to one of these levels, then we look to enter a trade. And that trade, uh, let me make this hot pink like the others. That is hot. Whew, man. Ouch. Sizzling. When price gets to one of these levels, then we, we just look for a trade, right? So buy this dip down here, right? I, I longed down in here. Um, I missed two opportunities to short up here, unfortunately. But I was actually able this morning to long 
when we were getting a bounce off of um, off of one of these uh, off of this level down here um, and I longed when we we, we bounced off this uh, this daily level and I got a little scalp in there so whenever price comes to one of these levels we're looking for a trade right I mean just just look we can even even if we didn't have market cipher which I which I don't recommend because it gives you that added layer of confluence but look at what happens we, we come up we hit this level and immediately boom we come down uh, again, we come up, we hit this level, and we come down. Uh, we come up, hit this level, we come down. We come up, we hit this level, we come down. Like that's one, two, three, four shorts you could have made right there. We hit this level, we come up. We hit this level, we come up. We hit this level, we come up. We don't always come up all the way, but again, we hit this level, we come up. And I'm pretty sure I, I traded both of these moves up. And so that's kind of how you trade the range you just look for those supports those support and resistances and you trade those and another thing you can really take advantage of in the ranges are the the patterns okay the patterns so if we come back here to 2019 we can start to see that you know we form these types of patterns like we we see here that we have a triangle and when there's when there's low uh volatility in the market these patterns really become easier to trade because there's less market manipulation going on and we can kind of trust the technical analysis a little more like f2 pools not dumping when we're stuck trading in a two percent range right they're just they don't they're not going to be doing that so we could t trade these these triangles and stuff like that and um you know we might not always hit our take profit levels but you can kind of see just by looking here that you know, we could draw triangles, we could draw channels like this, or you might even consider this more of like a, a descending wedge that we break out of. And this one, we pretty much perfectly hit our target. Uh, maybe even we even exceeded our target a little bit there. Uh, so, you know, when, when things are trading sideways, keep an eye on these types of things. Uh, and then, of course, look at this. This is a classic bull flag right here, right? We, we came up. We had the bull flag. We traded the, the downward channel. I mean, this is, this is a textbook, textbook bull flag right here. So when things are less volatile, we're going to have more of these types of patterns that will become easier to trade. And then when we are in these little consolidation areas we should be either looking for a pattern to form and a pattern you know it could be a flag it could be a wedge even just a channel even if you just see bitcoin trading in a channel when we break out of that channel there's there's a good chance that we will have a break um, i don't know if you would consider this no nah, i wouldn't consider this anything specific besides just a little zone of consolidation but if you see that we're you know even just a, a rectangular zone of consolidation these can be great because you just take a box over here you go to your paintbrush tool make a rectangular box just draw a box around this area and when you see that we're breaking out of the box and look at this market cipher also is telling us as we're trading in this box, we're getting a very, very, very clear downward direction on market cipher B on the four hour. Okay, we get the money flow crossing down. So we know, okay, we're coming out of this box of consolidation, let's short it down. And we could have gotten a nice move there. So you can see that trading in these in these crypto winters, the moves are still gonna be there. They're not gonna be as erratic. And then really we can trade these as as ranges as well so if i if i put a horizontal line right here let's say um, as the high and then right here as the low and then we just mark levels of support and resistance along the way up like we had one there for sure we had one here for sure then what we do is you know we can also trade this level to level right we can make our patterns and trade this level to level at the same time so we know 
Um, and I would even put one right here because of this zone of consolidation that we had. And I'm trying my best to look to the left here, guys. So I, I will mark these levels based on the left of the chart. So I would put one here, too. Um, and, yeah, we obviously have one right here. We obviously had one right here. Um, we had one right here, right here. I'm just looking where price found those sticking points and then the absolute low. And so this gives us our market structure to, from which we can work with, where we're not expecting any kind of breakout, any kind of crazy like move. But we do know, okay, there's a support right here. So we had this massive pump. And then when price comes down to hit this level, I'll be looking for a long. And, you know, you can enter a long position right here. You have a very clean place to put your stop loss. And obviously, your take profit is going to be up here. And you need to keep in mind that, you know, you might not hit all your take profits. So, of course, like I like to do is to take my profit along the way and probably just based on what happened in the past somewhere in this general zone is where I would be looking to take profit because this was the apex of the triangle right in this area and it was also support here and so perhaps on the way up you take some profit right here and um, you know this trade actually would have gotten wicked out but then again we come down to the daily support that was a trade that was in profit and it would have been a winning trade for us if we managed it correctly we get the bounce off this support again and we just trade we have a very clean place to put our stop loss and we just trade level to level and this trade actually could have been uh, sorry about that guys this trade actually could have been very lucrative for us and so really it just goes back to like the basics of trading patterns trading level to level it, it becomes much more relaxed in these kind of crypto winters and also i think that market cipher gives us much clearer much clearer signals here because um you know the price is less erratic and it's more bound into these ranges i mean look at when, when we break out of this descending wedge we get a very very clear bottom and then trigger trigger and then right in here we're starting to get money flow crossing over before we even break out of the wedge on the four hour we, we're getting money flow crossing over into the blue uh, as you can see right here right money flow is in the blue right here before we even break out of the wedge so it's it's just it becomes very clear and same here we're in the bull flag uh, before we even break out of the bull flag money flow is in the blue on market cipher B uh, this triangle uh, before we even break out of the triangle oh no I was wrong we we money flow is not in the blue before we break the triangle but look at this direction bottom higher trigger wave higher trigger wave even higher trigger wave on market cipher B on the four hour this is the four hour time frame boom and then we break out of that triangle um, these these things just become very very much more clear and even if we're not uh, looking at patterns like right here, right? What happens? We get a bottom, we get consecutive trigger waves, and then we immediately break above this resistance, and whoop, we come up. So that's kind of how we're, that's kind of how I am looking to trade uh, in these in these ranges. And then when we do get something like this on the four hour, where it's very clear that we're now again in an uptrend, it's very clear that we are back in an uptrend again. Then we switch back into uptrend mentality where we're looking to buy the lows when we're testing the, the trend lines, sell the highs, and we can get some nice we can get some nice longs here. So I kind of just went over this, but yeah, for range trading, we're gonna identify ranges using support and resistance levels. We're going to buy low, sell high. We're gonna long the support, we're gonna short the resistance. Uh, it's the most simple thing that you can tell somebody, buy low, sell high, but our, our inclination uh, as humans, I guess, is to buy high and sell low. Because when we see the price going up, we get that FOMO feeling and we want to get in. And when we see price going down, we get that FOMO feeling and we want to get out. But you will find that you will have a lot of success in trading just buying, high, uh, <laughs> buying low and selling high right we, we came all the way up here we crashed all the way back down to this support you know I'm sure a lot of people are like well this is it guys Bitcoin's over now uh, we're going we're going back down to 2000 people probably thought but you buy here and we get this nice bull flag 
all the way up. We want to also focus on good risk to reward ratio. See, here's the thing. Losses are going to come, like right here, where we come down to this support and we set our buy, our, our long position right here. We put our stop loss under the support, okay? And, um, you know, our take profits are, are these areas. Well, guess what? We get wicked out, wicked out. That's okay. We need to accept the fact that that's going to happen because we know that we have a good risk to reward ratio. And the focus should be on finding those high probability trades, those high probability trades where you know, okay, I'm at support. Market Cypher is giving me an upward direction and I'm at support. I know I have to risk very little to potentially gain a lot. So if I get wicked out, that's okay. I will get in the next trade and the next trade will be a winning trade. And this is especially true if you're trading with some kind of algorithm where you're you're looking at, you know, the, the 50 minute, five minute, or the four hour, 24 minute. But just keep in mind, losses will happen, but the focus, especially in these ranges, should be longing support, shorting resistance, good risk to reward ratio. Okay. So, in the meantime, and, and I already have this here, uh, but what we need to do is we need to take profits on the way up. We need to stack our crypto and our stable coins. So right now, like I said, as I am trading the bull market, I'm taking the profits that I make from trading, and right now I'm exclusively trading as much as I can, inverse perpetual, to stack my Bitcoin. But when I'm trading Litecoin and other things on Binance, I'm stacking my tether. I'm stacking my tether. And I'm, I'm keeping my tether stacked because I want to make sure that um, I'm always prepared and I have capital, not only to pay myself, but also to buy cryptocurrency at a very low price. So I'm stacking my crypto. I'm stacking my Tether and other stable coins as well. I, I, will, I will exchange Bitcoin to USDC often as well. But that leads to the question, in, in the bear market, what do you do? Are you going to be trading for Bitcoin or are you going to be trading for stablecoin? Well, for me, I, I say both. Just like what you do in the bull market, that's what I would do in a bear market. And the reason for that is because overall, I do have a bullish bias to Bitcoin and crypto in general. I don't believe that after this bull market is over that Bitcoin will be over. Just like at the end of 2017, Bitcoin was not over. In fact, we came back, we hit new all-time highs, it just took a few years. I believe the same thing is going to happen again. So when I'm shorting this, I'm going to be shorting for Bitcoin. I'm also going to be shorting for Tether on Bybit. I'm going to be doing the regular old inverse, I'm sorry, the regular old perpetual contracts where the Tether is going to be my base currency that I'm taking profit in. But I don't think it's a good idea to go to the extreme one way or the other. Like some people say, I will only ever stack Bitcoin and never Tether. Well, the reality is until Bitcoin becomes a unit of measurement where you can go to the store and buy, you know, produce for a fixed number of Bitcoin, uh, you know, like an apple it would be like 0. 0.000001 Bitcoin. Uh, or something like that, until we can buy regular goods and services for a fixed number of Bitcoin and not buying goods and services with a number of Bitcoin that is uh, measured against the dollar, right? Because if people are selling you something for $200 worth of Bitcoin, well, you know, back uh, during the corona dump, $200 worth of Bitcoin was a heck of a lot more Bitcoin than it is right now. Now $200 of Bitcoin is like 0 .003 Bitcoin, but back then, last year, it was a, a much more, a much bigger chunk of Bitcoin. It was, um, you know, like an, like almost an eighth of a Bitcoin, you could say. So, you know, until that's the case, then it's always a good idea to stack your stablecoin, especially if you're trading for a secondary income. Uh, it's always good to pay yourself when you're doing this, and you know, if if your Bitcoin that you're stacking is consistently going down in the world of, you know, what people typically use to measure the value of an exchange, then you want to make sure you have some stable coin. But at the same time, 
it's always an amazing idea to stack your crypto when it is at a very low price. Like um, when, during the Corona dump, I purchased a large amount of Bitcoin. Um, that's just what I did because I thought to myself, this is this is amazing. I, I don't I don't know if there will be any other time for me to get Bitcoin at this low again. And so far, I've, I've been right. Now, who knows? We might <laughs> we might dump down. It's crazy to think that we went from a three thousand dollar Bitcoin um, to a sixty thousand dollar Bitcoin in one year. That's uh, that that's insane. And so, three thousand seems so far away for us, but it's just twelve months. That's all all it was last year at this time. We were we were chilling in the in the you know the the thousands instead of the tens of thousands. So, I, I think, you know, in, in life, it's best if you don't put all your eggs into one basket. I, I take this literally as well. I have multiple baskets that I keep my eggs in every day when I get my eggs. I have two actual egg baskets, one for the clean eggs, one for the dirty eggs. <laughs> but then inside the house, we have many different bowls and baskets that we use to keep the eggs in. And um, that way, if something happens, right, like if my daughter... One day we were uh, we were getting ready to go, I think, to uh, to our our religious uh, congregation, and um, all of a sudden we hear our daughter go, "Look, eggs!" And we turn around, and, and I had put a basket of eggs on the table, and there they all were on the floor, all broken, and um, and so it's a good thing I had other baskets of eggs. So I keep some of my crypto eggs in Tether. I keep some of them in Bitcoin, uh, keep some of them in USDC, and then various other cryptocurrencies as well, right? I'm always going to hodl bags of uh, some of these coins. But that's how I'm doing it. And I think that if we have this mindset of not putting all our eggs into one basket, not that I don't l like believe in the future of Bitcoin, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm not that kind of person that's only going to hold Bitcoin no matter what, um, especially when it comes to paying myself. And if we just take it as it comes, right, when we see we're in a downtrend, we prioritize the shorts. When we see we're in an uptrend, we prioritize the longs. When we see we're ranging, we look for these patterns. We look to long support, short resistance. Then we're, go we're going to be okay. We will still be able to do this in a bear market, in a crypto winter. It's not the this detrimental thing that everybody thinks it is. I mean, keep in mind that there have been people trading Bitcoin consistently um, on Binance and then starting in 2018 on Bybit, and it was not a bull market. And people like CryptoFace uh, were doing this, and they were making quite a lot of money just trading in these in these sideways ranging markets. So it's not the end of the world, not at all, not even close to the end of the world. Although the end of the world might possibly be close, the end of the the Bitcoin trading possibilities are not. So, And you know, look for patterns and stuff. And stuff. I mean, there's just so many things you can find. If it, Any kind of pattern you can see, any kind of zone of consolidation you can see where we break out of it and you could make a nice a nice little trade like you know we were forming here what looks to be a bull flag you got a fake out up here that was a nice fake out too although not really you you would have hit your take profit right because you would have set your your take profit oh uh no you probably would have set your take profit more like this so you you might have made something out of this trade but then we broke down and perfectly hit that take profit. I don't know if, if I would even consider that something worth trading off of. But yeah, I'm just looking around and as you're looking around, try and just draw things, connect things, look for patterns, look for resistances, look for trend lines, zoom out, zoom in. You know, right now I'm very zoomed um, zoomed in but if I zoom out a little bit you know I can see I can see these kinds of patterns forming here 
you know and this is the four hour time frame so they're significant they are significant um, you know look at this thing here we have a very clear channel trading in this channel you know buy the support sell the resistance buy the support sell the resistance buy the support uh, but then look market cipher is giving us a money flow crossover as we break out of the channel there's t so many so many trading opportunities in here as long as we have proper market structure all right so i am going to go to the discord and i'm going to do some questions if there are any um shout out to aj smith 90 welcome brother thank you for being here thank you for being here he's a, he's a new a new member uh because some people did drop out of the 50 and uh I said he could he could come join us, but the thing is, we're already almost over with the whole course, so I'm glad you could make it for a few sessions, brother. Welcome. And you know, it's funny because at the time, there is a lot of volatility here that we can trade, right? There is there is volatility that we can trade here. And um, it just looks so puny when we compare it to what's currently happening. But there is volatility in here. And, um, you know, we just need to be diligent when it comes to making sure to take profit when we're in profit because you know if we were to try and trade this uh, this triangle here the symmetrical triangle would we end up I mean eventually we would end up hitting all our take profits but let's be real none of us would actually stay in this trade from September 22nd uh, to March 10th to hit our take profits we would <laughs> we would probably be wicked out somewhere up in here and we would just be you know riding this down but yeah, there's there's plenty of opportunity to to trade this. Yeah, Moon Dream brings up a good point. Okay, the the divergences that are showing up on the weekly, and how does that fit with the predictions that we are going to 100k? I tend to believe that we are going to see a a, a a large correction before we get to 100k maybe 35 to 40 percent correction okay because because if we do go back to um, crypto winter uh, let's see where we were at I'm sorry that I I lost our spot here guys but if we come back to the top here look at what happens we have this massive 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 uptrend right here and then right before the actual dump we come down like a massive uh, you know 30 percent um, and right here we come down 35 percent in the middle of the bull run we're coming down 30 35 40 percent in the middle of the bull run so you know it wouldn't surprise me if if we start to see something like that happen because we were forming those divergences you know here you know uh, or here we were forming these divergences where price is consistently going up uh, momentum is consistently coming down over the course of the entire you know um, from from October all the way to November you know for the whole month and this is the daily time frame but let's see if we can pull up the weekly I might have I might have really messed us up here. Yeah, see, market cipher B doesn't go down. But if we're seeing it on the daily, then we know it's also showing up on the weekly. Um, I, I now I lost my spot here. Here we go. Yeah, so it, it's kind of hard to say because we we're getting these divergences on the larger time frames back here. But then we get a massive leg up, and then we get a dip, and then we get an even more of a leg up, and then we get a drop. So 
I believe we're going to see I, – here's what I'm, my sentiment. Okay, these are my feelings, so don't take me too seriously. But I think April is going to be a very bullish month. I think we're going to see a new all-time high. And then I think we're going to get a very large correction. And then I think we're going to get another leg up of the, of the bull market that will shock people. And I think we just need a correction to reset some of these market conditions so that the large buy orders can get filled – so that institutions can buy up that Bitcoin at a low price, uh, and then we continue upwards. But if we look right now on the weekly, and we go to where we're at, you know, we, we see these divergences that are forming. Um, things are coming down, and price is going up. So... It would not at all surprise me if we see some crazy thing come up to a new all-time high. We come back down, test, test, maybe not that low, but who knows? Test some of these really low levels, which, which are still like really high. Like if we come down like 35, 40 percent to like a 46, 45 thousand dollar Bitcoin, um, that would totally reset some of the metrics that we see for like the top indicators that are showing that the market is over. Uh, but it's not anything out of the ordinary for, for a bull market. And it would reset these uh, oscillators as well. So that's just how, how I think about it. But it's, it's definitely something to keep an eye on because the fact is we are forming divergences and we do need to we do need to keep that in mind, right? We need to keep that in mind. The RSIs are super high <laughs> on the weekly and momentum is coming down. So... And just if, if we're always prepared for it, then when it happens, we have a plan. That's what's most important. Are there any particular... Okay, um, Premier Crypto, can you touch on the significance of the 21 and the 55 EMAs? It's because they are FID numbers. Are they more or less reliable on a certain time frame? Do they work the same for other coins? Yeah, they work the same for other coins. I They're obviously most reliable on the higher time frames. So really... The reason I like these two, the 21 and the 55, is because, one, they are Fibonacci numbers, and two, they keep the chart clean enough to understand the trend without having, you know, multiple uh, EMAs. So if we just – typically, people will use five EMAs, and they'll do the um, the eight um, – They'll do the 13, uh, and then they'll do the 21, the 55, and then people will also do the 100, and some people will even do the 200. But, um, and, and really what people will do, and this is the way that I, I was taught as well with these EMAs, is when they're all crossed over each other, we're in a bull trend, and then when they're all crossed under each other, we're in the bear trend. Uh, for me, I just I like the I like just the two, the 21 and the 55. They tend to really act as very good dynamic support and resistance, very good trend indicators. To me, adding more is just too sloppy. If we're only going to use the eight and the 13, I feel that they don't really give us an accurate depiction of the trend because we can easily come under the 13 and the eight and still be in an uptrend. Uh, if we're using too high EMAs, like above the 55, then by the time we're in a downtrend, uh, the downtrend is over by the time we're under those EMAs. So I feel like it gives us a good, happy medium, uh, just the 21 and the 55. Uh, just by back testing, you can really see, you know, that that's that's giving us enough time to get into some really good trades before the trend is over. And when the trend is currently going on, it acts as very good dynamic support and resistance where we can buy in or or short from here. That's why I like those EMAs. And so for me, and everyone's different, this is how I primarily will identify the trend is those EMAs. Are there any particular red flags that would basically signal the big short? No, there are no particular red flags that would signal the big short. All I'm doing is I'm going to be looking, and when I see something like this, 
right, where price is confirming under the 21 EMA on the 4 hour, this is where I would ent exit if I was in a long position. If I was in a swing long position, I always exit when we come and confirm 4 hour candles below the 21 EMA. So it happens in stages. I'm bullish, bullish, life is great, everything's bullish, everything's bullish, boom, okay. I'm no longer in a swing long position. I'm now sitting on the sidelines. If I'm going to long, it's going to be a scalp long. Uh, we confirm under the 55 EMA. Okay, now I'm getting more bearish. We're rejecting off the 55 EMA. Okay, looking for a short. Now the moving averages cross over. Okay, officially, I am now bearish, and my priority is on the the shorts and the bear market. And so, um, in, until we see these trend lines move back, I'm sorry, until we see these moving averages flip back over, I am looking for the next move down. And if this is the big top, if this was the big top, then in stages, right, confirm below the 21, confirm below the 55, moving averages crossover. These are the four, the four gateways to the full bearish mentality. And then it, regardless of whether this was the big one or not, we're, we're operating as if it was the big one. And if it keeps coming down, then... Um, it doesn't it doesn't really matter to us if that was the big one or not right because we're already operating in that mind frame that we're looking for the shorts and then if things change then we switch our mindset again right we come up we confirm above the 21 um, we confirm above the 55 the moving averages cross over these are the the gates back into the the bull mindset and so it's just about looking looking at things on a, on a macro scale and instead of waiting for the big one and always wondering when we're at the top, it should be whenever we get to a top where things start to reverse, we shift the way we trade. We shift the way we look at the charts. And then we're already prepared. If that happened to be the big one, then we're already doing the right thing. All right. Does anyone have any other cues? Maybe we got some A's, perhaps. Man, things are really coming to a to a peak up here. Something's something's got to give up here. Something's got to give. 21, 21 EMA in the four hour, holding as a very strong, strong resistance, uh, strong support for us here. If we break below this, you know, obviously going to be looking looking to come down a little bit more thanks moon dream thank you old crown uh water skier 2020 do i treat my hodl the same way no not not really i have i have a hodl wallet right i have a tracer where i keep a certain amount of bitcoin and other cryptos in there and i will never touch them I will never touch them. I'm just hodling them. And nobody knows the password except for me. So if I go, if I get taken out, then um, that's it. They'll be stuck forever. They'll be stuck forever. Uh, thank you, TK42Dan. Appreciate you, brother. Uh, no, uh, water skier. I, I do not. I do not take profits from my hodl Bitcoin. I just don't. I take profits. I have I have three layers of Bitcoin. So I have like my my never touch Bitcoin. I have my potentially will touch Bitcoin, and then I have my trading account. So yes, I will never sell that Bitcoin even at the top of the market. I will not. I will not. Uh, the, 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 my long term hodl I will never sell at the top of the market I just will not because because here's the thing as a, as a trader I'm a trader and I'm a, I'm a bitcoin holder 
So as a trader, I want to sell at the top of the market so that I have capital to invest and trade and do my thing in the midst of a bear market and crypto winter. But as a Bitcoin holder, you know, I'm holding on to the asset um, with the mindset that in the long run, it's going to be worth more in the future than it's currently worth now. And if the, the bull market ends, in the big scheme of things, that's, that's just a correction. It's really just a correction, right? If we go to um, the weekly time frame, or even if we go to, let's say, the monthly time frame, okay, and we just look at Bitcoin, you know, the catastrophic, the catastrophic collapse in 2018, that, that was, ju was just a correction, right? I mean, if, the, if this was a five-minute time frame, right, um, you wouldn't have sold here, right? If this was the five-minute time frame and you get in right here, all right, uh, you wouldn't want to take your profits down here. Uh, you would want to take them higher. So if we're just going to see these cycles kind of repeat and we kind of shrink this thing down a little, then, um, you know, we're just riding these waves and then, you know, keep riding them until, uh, who, know, who knows how high we could get? Really, who knows how high we could get? And so that's that's my mindset as a Bitcoin holder. And I don't even consider that I have that Bitcoin. Um, but the good news is on the monthly chart, you know, this candlestick is blue again. This candlestick is blue again. So it was purple for a while. And everyone, everyone was freaking out. But, yeah. And we will see. This is actually pretty crazy. Three, four, five, seven. Seven blue monthly candles in a row. I don't know if we've ever had that. Let me go to... Um, this is Bitcoin from its inception. All the way back here. Um, when it was like a, a, couple, a couple cents. Um, you know, if we just look at this... We can we can see that uh, from the beginning of Bitcoin, we have these these kinds of cycles that happen where we have these these parabolic moves like right from the very beginning, right? Look at this. This is this is right from the get go of Bitcoin back in in 2011. When we had this huge crash. In fact, I, I did a video on my channel a number of years ago uh, after the 2018 crash where I pretended, I, I showed the charts and I was pretending as if this was, you know, 2018. I'm like, man, guys, look at what happened. We crashed and there's no hope for Bitcoin. And uh, then I kept going through the cycles like, look, this this is just what happens, right? We, we started down here at five cents, six cents. We came all the way up to 30 bucks. And then we crashed all the way down. We went from $30 to $2. That's insane. You know, will we ever come back? And then look, look what happens after that. <laughs> look at this. You know, this is, this is crazy. And then, um, you know, after this, what happens? Of course, we have a, a serious crash. And uh, it's, 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 it's catastrophic at the time. But in hindsight, guys... In hindsight, we cannot even see those crashes. We cannot even see those crashes. Um, and then, you know, 2020, the 2020 crash looks, you know, pitiful compared to what the crash that's going to happen now. And so it just happens in cycles. So I'm, I'm just holding this thing, understanding it's a, it's a new speculative asset. Um, but I do have to be honest and say, you know, when I'm looking at the monthly monthly chart here, for Bitcoin, uh, comparing the the 2018 crash to what we're seeing right now, it's not looking the best. But keep in mind, keep in mind, guys, we have these areas where it looks like we're about to print a red wave, okay? But we don't. So I'm I'm still expecting that this can come up a little bit higher. Let's come up a little bit higher. Um, Now, everything I just said, guys, please take it with a grain of salt because it's, it's how I feel, okay? It's how I feel. It's how I feel. Yeah, AFIX. Like, uh, one Bitcoin is always worth one Bitcoin. That's, that's the thing, the mindset of holding Bitcoin. It's like I want to have a certain number of Bitcoin, period. I don't care about the dollar worth. Is the dollar 
even going to be a thing in 10 years? I, I don't know, right? I, I don't know. The way we're printing, the way things are going, you know, you have the World Economic Forum talking about the Great Reset, the central bank digital currencies that are coming in. Uh, people are not wanting to use the dollar as the, U as the world reserve currency anymore. It's like, what is going to happen in the future? I don't know. But I, I, in countries that have experienced hyperinflation, uh, you know, Bitcoin is, is acting as a stable asset. Where, where if, if I were to wake up tomorrow and, and uh, a dozen eggs is $5,000, well, I, one Bitcoin is still one Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah, TK42, Dan, I'd, he'd rather have 100 Bitcoin than 1 Bitcoin, yeah, for sure. CryptoFace uses the Coinbase chart because it's the actual price people are trading as opposed to the Bybit chart with mark price based on funding. Do I have any thoughts on this, and how can we take advantage of this gap? There are even larger gaps on other exchanges like Crypto.com's app. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of ignorant about that. Uh, I just use the Bybit chart because that's, that's what I use to trade, but... Um, Let's see, BTC, USD, uh, and Coinbase. Um, yeah, it's about $100 cheaper right now on Coinbase than it is on Bybit. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't have any thoughts on this. I don't have any thoughts on this. I'm sorry. Yeah, look at that. The two day chart. The two day chart. Let's take a look. Yeah, so, you know, what I really see here. To be honest with you, is something similar, um, and and this is this is why I think potentially we could we could see a huge pump in April and then a serious correction, because a lot of times we'll see uh, like four humps, and then boom we'll have this huge hump and a huge pump and then a dump something like this. Um, let's see something like this right here. One, two, three, four, huge pump, and then a dump. Um, where if we look right here, we were forming these divergences on the four. This is on the four hour, but it applies to any time frame, right? We're getting these downward momentum, and then boom, we pump up to an all time high randomly, right? We, we went from everyone, including myself, I was super bearish. I remember this was a Friday. And um, we we're trading sideways. I was expecting us to come lower because of the divergences. And I, I didn't even think about this pattern that could potentially be happening. And then over the weekend, we had this massive pump uh, to a new all-time high. And so I think potentially we could be seeing something like that forming on the two-day. You know, you'll, you'll look and see. You, you will see this pattern all over the place. You will see this kind of pattern all over the place. And so that's why I'm feeling that we're, we're going to have a very bullish month of April and then have one of those, those big corrections. Um, but that's very interesting on the, on the two-day. Let me see if, I can, if we can see something else similar to that. It's, it happens all the time on different time frames. It's, it's rare that it will happen on the four-hour, but like especially on like the half-hour, the 45-minute... We will see stuff like this happening all the time, um, like even right here, right, where we see the waves coming down, where we have like, um, you know, one, two, three, four, bam, and we have this big old pump, whoo. Um, we'll, we'll see that a lot, and so that could potentially be what's happening on the two day. Just a thought. Just a thought. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, TK42 Dan brings up a good point about depending on the exchange that you're referencing and whether they have enough history to work with. 
yeah, every exchange is different because of the history of, of, you know, when they listed the coin. If any of you guys are interested in seeing Bitcoin from its exception, just type in BLX, and it's the um, the 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 brave uh, the brave new coin liquid index for Bitcoin. This will show you going back to the very beginning, which which is nice, which is really nice. And I, it's interesting. I've seen people draw Elliott waves on here, um, and uh, they there's pretty interesting pretty interesting. Uh, stuff you could kind of draw on this if you're into Elliott Wave I'm, I'm not really that's why I don't touch on it in this in this course but I am uh, not against it in any way I, I think it, I know I know a lot of traders who use it with great success but for me it just kind of overcomplicates things and I'd rather just use support and resistance um, if it ain't broke don't fix it is how I feel Alright guys, if there's no more questions, I'm going to cut the stream, but I appreciate y'all for being here. And uh, before we go, um, what topic should I cover uh, tomorrow? Alright, peace TK42Dan, thanks for being here brother. Three commas. Uh, are you talking about how to use Binance with three commas? How to link your or how to set up bots? I'm I'm still learning all these things. I, I wouldn't even feel comfortable teaching that, to be honest with you. I'm still I'm still in the process of learning how to do that. <laughs> Billionaire Club. Thank you, Premier Crypto. Thank you, Crypto Clan. Appreciate you, brother. Yeah, so if, if, if we don't have a topic for tomorrow, then I'm just going to do a Q&A session. And, um, you know, because, again, we got through this faster than I thought we would. I thought we would take two sessions for uh, support and resistance, um, but we did it in one. And, um, yeah, I kind of, uh, I drew the outline. I drew up the outline for the course. It was the first time I've done it, so I, I wasn't too sure on how time would, how much time it would take. Thank you, Crazy Bean. <laughs> 